Page 59, a Hungarian dance. At the top of the page, they're introducing you to a new symbol. It's called a repeat sign. See, typically when you read a piece of music, you start at the beginning and you read through to the end, like reading a book. You just go through it. Well, there's different kinds of signs and indications to tell you to go different places at different times. I call it the road map. Where do we go? Repeat sign is one of those things. And it, it is simply a thin, a thick bar line. Like the end of a piece symbol we've had, you look at the bottom of page 58. At the end of that piece, there's a thin, a thick bar. That's the end of the, that's a symbol for the end of the piece. Okay. A repeat sign looks like that, but they've added two dots. And that's not the end of the piece, although it could be. Because sometimes the, the piece ends at a repeat sign, and in which case, it's also the end of the piece. I don't know, I don't know the way it works. So you have one repeat sign here at the beginning. You see that? We call that a reverse repeat sign because it's in the reverse direction. It's in the backwards. It's sitting there backwards. But if you look at the end of the second line, there's a repeat sign and that's typical. That's the normal repeat sign. So a repeat sign simply put is you go back to a reverse, the previous reverse repeat sign and play that part again. If there is no reverse repeat sign, because there may not be, then you go to the beginning and play it all again. So, if they've done it here, they want to teach you both re the repeat signs, but typically you would not see a reverse repeat sign at the beginning of the piece because it's redundant. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't need to be there. But the, the reverse repeat sign in line three, the third line down, that's important. So in this case, you would play the first two lines and then you'd repeat back up to the beginning and play the first two lines again. And then you do the last two lines and then you'd repeat back to the third line and play those two lines again. That's the way it works. And that's the symbol. Yeah, you'll see it a lot, but okay. Now, Hungarian dance, four, four time, just make sure we got the figures and the notes right here. You only have a C in the right hand in the first two lines. There's a C at the beginning of each line. Otherwise, the left hand gets it. So let's go to the third line. You're here. These are half notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then C again. And then the last line is the same as the third line. Well, that's not bad. Left hand. You're doing thumb here to put you in the C position. There, C Pentecostal scale, whatever. I don't know. And then you just play it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So forth. Third line down. Half notes like the right hand. And, and then the quarter note. Rest. So forth, so work out the left hand, then put the hands together. One, two, three, four. Go down to the third line, because the second line is similar to the first. Not exact, but similar. Third line. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So forth. So Work out the notes and the fingering and the rhythm and get that all worked out. Get rid of any hesitations you may have. If you're hesitating anywhere or something, work on that spot and get rid of them because the beat has to be steady. You don't have to go as fast as I was going. You go your speed, but the beat has to be steady. And when you can do that, then go back and add the articulation. That's the staccatos and accents and then slurs. The beginning, we have a slur. So you're going to connect these two notes. Plus, on the first note, there's an accent, so you give it a little extra oomph. There. Then on the left hand, those notes are staccato, so you're going to short. And then slur. And again. So forth, third line down. These are accents, just give them all a little extra oomph. Staccatos, slurs. Now, 
There's different ways of interpreting music and you'll have to decide for yourself what you like and what you don't like. But some people on these, like the half notes that are accented note, you got note after note that are all accented. There's a string of notes all accented. I don't know what I'm trying to say. You'll figure it out. To help bring out the accent, sometimes it helps to separate the notes slightly. Just a little bit. But that's an interpretation. There's no rule says you have to do that. So it's up to you whether you choose to do that experiment. Since it's going to be repeated, maybe one time you'll play them more connected and the next time you play them disconnected. Because when you repeat things, you play them more than once, you really, if possible, would not play them exactly the same. You want to change something. Ugh. So maybe the first time you play this in the third and fourth lines, you're doing them connected. <laughs> When you repeat it, you disconnect them. And you don't have to do that. You can do it any way you want. But I'm just giving you options to let you know that there's different ways people interpret these things. Now we go back and we add the dynamics. Well, at the beginning it's an F dash P. The on repeat they just put in there to help you out. That's not part of the music. You normally won't see on repeat there. It's just the F dash P. Simply means the first time you play it, it's F, or forte is loud, play it loud. Then when you repeat it, you play it soft, the P for uh -huh. Then in the third line, all you get is an F, so you're going to play it loud both times there. You'll have to decide what loud and soft is, because it's subjective. It can change from situation to situation. Not really loud and not really soft, just loud and soft, somewhere in there. Speed-wise, this is a rather quick little thing, but you have to be accurate, so that comes first. Huh? About this one, two, three, four, one, that's spirited. It depends on what time of day it is for me, but typically you'll see. You can get it faster than that or slower than that, but again, you have to be accurate. That's more important. Now I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. Make sure you have those all correct. I'm not going to do the dynamics, but I will do the accents and the staccatos. So I'll give us four counts. Let's play it together. One, two, ready, go. bottom of the page there is a duet part. I can play that and you can play the top part with the part you just played. But I want to speed it up quite a bit. Now to make it work I need you to go up an octave on the piano again. So just pretend the middle C goes up and is here instead. So instead of here you're going to be up here. Here. The whole thing is up here. 
And I will speed this up quite a bit, so it's more like here. One, two. About that speed, so make sure you can play at that speed, and then I'll, we'll play it together. So I'll give us four counts. One, two, ready, go.